My name is Purva and welcome to a short presentation on how to troubleshoot service principle name problems in Kerberos authentication. This presentation assumes that you have a basic understanding of what Kerberos and service principle names are. Service principle names, commonly referred to as SPNs, are values that can be placed on a user or computer object in Active Directory. They are used for several things, namely they advertise and locate a service on a particular computer in an Active Directory forest and they identify a password to encrypt the service ticket with when a client submits a request. Once received, that service's computer needs to be able to decrypt the ticket, which can only be done if the password was the same as the account where the SPN was located. This is a roundabout way of saying that if there are duplicates in that Active Directory forest, then the ticket will be encrypted with the wrong password. Hence, SPNs must be unique in an Active Directory forest. To understand where a SPN comes into play, we need to understand how they are used. This is the traffic a client will send and receive on the network as it requests Kerberos tickets and receives them. In the slides diagram, we use Kerberos specific terms of AS underscore REQ and AS underscore REP to indicate ticket granting ticket requests and responses. Also, TGS underscore REQ and TGS underscore REP to indicate service ticket requests and responses. This is the traffic that you would expect to see in Network Monitor when filtering for Kerberos. So where would you see the SPNs appear? They would be in the TGS underscore REQ and TGS underscore REP packets. The service ticket being requested will appear in clear text in that exchange. The three most common SPN issues are duplicate SPNs, unknown SPNs, or misplaced SPNs. Duplicate SPN issues are more common to occur when an application or a service has been migrated to a new computer and the application dynamically registers its own SPNs. Unknown SPNs are more likely to occur when someone is setting up an application to run. This is less likely to occur with built-in services like CIFS since Windows computers register their default SPNs automatically. Misplaced SPN scenario can happen most often when there is some confusion regarding which object in Active Directory should have the SPNs entered on, whether it should be the service account's user object or the computer's object on which the service is running. As mentioned a little bit earlier, SPNs in the wrong account would cause the service ticket to be encrypted with the wrong password and Kerberos authentication in that case would fail. In network traces and events, this would be indicated with an error similar to KRB underscore AP underscore ERR underscore modifier. Let's take a look at some of the common errors that you would see with missing SPNs. In this example, a client requests a session ticket for mssql forward slash sql backend dot contoso dot com colon 1433. The KDC searches for this SPN and cannot find one. It returns a response back to the client with an error KDC ERR S principle unknown. In the case of an SPN which is misplaced, we would see AP error modified. Here's what will happen. A client would request a session ticket for MSSQL SVC forward slash SQL backend dot contoso dot com colon one four three three. Let us assume that the KDC searches for this SPN and finds one registered to the SQL backend machine account. 
the KDC returns a service ticket that is encrypted with the password for the SQL backend of machine account. The client in turn presents this service ticket to the SQL SVC ACTT service account. The service account cannot decrypt this ticket since it was actually encrypted with the computer's password and therefore returns an error called AP ERR modifier. Tools useful to troubleshoot SPNs would be network traffic analysis tools like Network Monitor or Wireshark. In Network Monitor, we can use filters like Kerberos V5 and DNS to filter out relevant traffic. In Wireshark, similar filters would be Kerberos and DNS. SetSPN.exe is another command line based tool that can be used to list SPNs, add them, or delete them. A GUI based tool would be adsiedit.msc. LDP.exe and querySPN.vbs are also useful in troubleshooting SPN issues. Using LDP.exe, we can take a look at SPN's registry against objects in Active Directory. On the left hand side in the screenshot, we see the domain controller's object and on the right hand side we see the SPNs registered to this domain controller. In ADSI edit we see MSSQL SVC forward slash SQL backend dot contoso dot com colon one four three three SPN registered to SQL SVC ACTT and this information appears on the service principal view attribute for this object. Using setSPN.exe, we can add, delete, or list service principal names. The format for this is setSPN, space, the switch you want to use, space, the SPN which you would want to either add, or delete space and the object you want this operation run against. For example, to add an SPN, we write set SPN minus A space MSSQL SVC forward slash SQL backend dot contoso dot com colon one four three three space contoso backslash SQL SVC ACTT. To delete an SPN, we would write set SPN minus D as in Delta MSSQL SVC forward slash SQL backend dot contoso dot com colon one four three three space contoso backslash SQL backend. Similarly, to list SPNs registered against a object in Active Directory, whether it is a user or a computer object, we would write set SPN minus L as in Lima, Contoso, backslash, SQL SVC, ACTT. This command would show us the registered SPNs for the SQL SVC ACTT object. Thank you for your time. I hope this presentation was useful to you.